Yes. <laughs> okay, so I got one minute. Oh my god, my heart is beating like crazy. Okay, I don't even know what my. Okay, I'm going to Google, get my mail. Like, I'm so, I'm so nervous. It's, it's crazy. But I did, I did pray for this. Sending you a new. Wait, what? I'm nervous though. Yeah, let me get out this uh, teacher email before something pop up and I get upset. I can get off this web. Oh, I'm sorry. <gasps> she accepted. <gasps> I'm almost in there. Hey, Miss Madison, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I thought I'd uh, sit in front of my uh, faith crib here, so. Yeah, I've seen. I've seen. I don't know if I've seen it necessarily, but I've heard you talk about it in a few of the um, YouTube. Yeah, videos. it makes me uh, excited. Let me hit record really fast, and then I'm actually going to also record on my phone. And if you see me glance down, I'm not like checking the time. Like, it doesn't mean the interview's going bad. I'm just checking to make sure I saw the audio. Okay, no worries. I'm nervous. I just wanted to tell you, Miss Madison. I'm nervous. Oh, no. Don't be nervous. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, I honestly, like, I've seen your YouTube videos and, um, you know, I just, I know a lot of women have been kind of nervous to talk about their story. And so I totally understand being nervous. And like, if I ask something that you don't want to answer, you totally don't have to. No, I'm um, getting it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it all. I'm ready. Yeah. But I appreciate you talking to me. Yes. Um, so I guess, do you want to just start off by telling me a little bit about, you know, your journey and, and kind of what prompted you to start making these YouTube videos and share your story? Oh yeah, sure. Okay, so um, of course um, I uh, do have infertility. Um, I'm not able to have children without the help of uh, uh, medical assistance. Um, I found out, well, me and Gregory got married in uh, 2017 and um, we did want children, but we waited a little bit, probably like six, seven months or something like that, but then um, we wanted to have children. But um, within our first year, I was noticing like I wasn't getting pregnant, so um, I made an appointment with my doctor, and then my doctor started me on Clomid. Um, so once a month, I would have to take, um, I think it was like four or five days of uh, Clomid. I started on the low dosage, um, and then um, as the months go by and I wasn't getting pregnant, it would increase the dosage on the Clomid. Um, and then uh, I would take the ovulation shots. So of course, like we're timing everything in the days and things like that. So, um, and then I would go in and um, do blood work. They would draw my blood and see my levels. Um, so uh, we went to the highest dosage and my doctor said he won't be, uh, this is the highest um, he would take me. And um, it was like 10 months after that. He said that he wouldn't be able to treat me anymore. So that last month was crazy emotional. Um, but of course we didn't get pregnant and um I, I said i couldn't go back like when i found out that i wasn't pregnant i was like yeah i need a break because um you know i'm a teacher so i was going through a lot emotionally <laughs> when i was going through that clomid stuff uh, because and when when were you going through the clomid uh 2018 into 2019 i gotta remember when the pandemic was pandemic started 2020 so 2019 and then we yeah we took a break for like six months so i, I should have wrote down this timeline so i can give you better oh, no, numbers so yeah you we went through that and then um uh we stopped for a little bit and then i finally got enough courage to say okay greg um 
let's call the doctor. And I was kind of hoping he was like, okay, let's try Clomid again and not tell me I need an infertility doctor. But he was like, I, I won't be able to treat you anymore. You would have to go to um, a fertility specialist. And like, poof, my mind like blew up. Because I think that's the point where I realized like, uh, this is really happening, Chris. This is really your story. This is really your journey that you're going to have to take, right? So that's when I started my um, YouTube documentary. Uh, well, I guess it's a docu uh, documentary. Um, I'm a natural journal. Uh, I, I write in my journal quite often just to, you know, get my emotions out. But um, when I was like, it would be cool to start a YouTube video to talk it out. And then one day when I do have a uh, little baby Richmond's, they can actually uh, see me uh, talk about it and go through it and just like maybe learn something from it, hope and just how special they are. And uh oh, hold on. Ah! And uh, how we just like journeyed through it and they could just look back and see everything that we went through and how we waited and had hope. So that's where the YouTube video started. And like page one was the day or probably the week of I called um, Nashville Infertility, uh, Nashville Fertility Center and started my journey, so. Brilliant. I think it's so cool that you, you know, you're, you're on this journey and I know that my parents had a lot of, um, you know, infertility struggles as well. After I was born, my mom actually did IVF. I have a cousin who's going through IVF literally today. Um, so I think it's cool because I've heard so much about, you know, my mom's journey and my aunt's journey, but I've never been actually able to, like, see it, you know what I mean? So I oh, think yeah. Have, like, planned it beforehand that you're going to, you yeah. know, start that journey. Yeah. Um, did you feel, you know, when you first were told, you know, you have to go to an infertility doctor, what a lot of people have told me and have told Beth Payne, um, who has also been through it, is just like, you You feel kind of alone. Um, did you feel that way? Did you reach out to people? Sort of what was that, what was your emotional state, I guess? Yeah. So, yeah, um, I felt alone um, before I started the YouTube video. Uh, so when I was going through the Clomid, when I was going through the ovulation shots, and um, when I was, like, going through, um, you know, those ups and downs and hope and hopelessness and disappointments those are the days those those are the months that I was actually um most alone like I didn't think anybody really understood but uh as soon as I started the YouTube and people were able to understand my emotions and understand um or just have a glimpse of what it feels like to go through infertility and the more I spoke out the less alone I felt so I think it was um uh, it was a turnaround for me the more um, I, I spoke out. Because I, I, I say often in the YouTube that um, uh, it's a silent sufferer. Like, people really don't say anything about it. Because at first I felt shame and embarrassment that I wasn't able to, um, you know, give my husband a child. Like, that was my dream. So, um, yeah. After, after I started telling people what I'm going through and helping others, that's the... That's the beauty about it. Like when you start speaking out, you can help others. And I think that's what gives me hope uh, through the journey too. When I see somebody say thank you um, for sharing your story. So it helps me yeah. keep going. Um, it kind of was curved, but how did you, um, how did you meet your, your husband? Oh, uh, well, uh, when I was probably in elementary school, I started going to uh, his church. Uh, well, our church now. And then I kind of fell off the church scene. But I worked at Circuit City. And Circuit City closed. So um, his mom was like, hey, try Lowe's. And he worked at Lowe's. And uh, he was there. And that's when we became close friends, best friends. And then he was like, you need to get yourself back in church. And <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> that's how that started. Like, I've seen you there before. I know <laughs> Yeah, he was the one that actually brought me back, and and he was the one that never judged me. I was I got a lot of personality, and he never really judged me about it. So right. I love that guy. How old were you when you guys started, you know, falling in love? I guess. 
Whoa, Circuit City, 22. Uh, well, we kind of denied the love. We were like best friends for a very long time. And people were like, uh, you guys gonna get married? Y'all are dating? No, we're not. We were just like best friends for a long time. But I would say it's 2011 or 2012 is when we kind of discussed it, tried to date, it didn't work, but then <laughs> we came back together. It's like a weird little situation, um, yeah. but yeah. Are you, are you, where are you guys from? Like what town was this happening in? He, at Clarksville, Tennessee. He was born and raised here and I'm a military uh, child, so uh, oh, I moved cool. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so you eventually come in contact with Starfish, the nonprofit, correct? Yes, I got in. Well, it first started with uh, Resolve.org. Um, Resolve.org, I used to go to their um, their uh, support groups, virtual support groups. Um, number one, I, I don't have the money to pay for like uh, counsel. Um, so virtual support groups was awesome going through Resolve.org. And then one of the leaders said, you know what, you need to hook up with Molly. Molly, um, she is a part of the Tennessee Advocacy Group um, fighting for um, our um, insurance coverage. And when I hooked up with Molly, and that's when Kara came in with Starfish um, Foundation. And that's how that relationship um, sparked. I love it. I love being a part of it. Uh, and, and their, their uh, spirits are so contagious. Like, I love the positivity that they bring in every Wednesday, Warrior Warrior Wednesday, where we Zoom together. It's a lot of hope that comes. It's a lot of help. It's it's like free help that I don't think the counselors could as, have ever brought me. Um, so I love it. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. it, it feels that kind of nourishing to mm -hmm. you through this journey? Yeah, and it, and it makes you feel like you are not alone. Like, you get to talk to people that went through it, is going through it, or is about to go through it, or dream of going through it, you know? So it's like a little community. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you were the recipient of one of their raffle grants, correct? Can you tell me more about that? Yes! Of course I can. Um, so let me start by saying, like, I have um, I've applied for grants before and I got denied. Uh, so I know the feeling of um, not getting a grant. So um when they proposed the grant and they said Nashville Fertility Center, which is my clinic, I was really excited. But then I was like, okay, I need to get my emotions balanced because I felt that emotion of not winning a grant before. And I did not want to spiral again, right? So I was like, just keep that hope balanced just in case. Don't don't lose yourself in it, but um, stay on the narrow path, right? So this, this grant was a little different. I didn't have to convince them um, of um, the pain or convince them of my story. Um, it was really genuinely a raffle of whoever was in there could win it, right? I, I didn't win it. It was my um, sister-in-law, my brother's, uh, not brother, but my husband's brother's wife that won it but she transferred it to me. So um, that was a blessing. And, um, but this, this one was different. It was any and all from Tennessee can sign up. Um, on top of that, they were spreading awareness about this disease, this infertility. So it was, it was really, um, their grassroots are going and me and Greg, we did Facebook, uh, live videos compelling people to get in the raffle with us and the more people knew about it the more people were aware that we were going through something that is like uh bigger than us you know that we can't even afford uh so that was great and then the night that she the, Kara and Molly got on and I saw Jonathan and Angelica oh this is weird this is super weird like I something something ain't right but the way they said it, they did good and they were like legislative. We were talking to couples and how they support families. And I was like, okay, but I cried that day. Like I was crying that day because um, I had to take photos. I do photo shoots to raise money too. So I kind of was like frustrated about uh, begging people for money or using me to like, you know, um, fundraise to have a baby. 
Um, so I was kind of emotional there and I was kind of emotional about school and being remote. It was just like crazy stuff. Um, so when we sat there and I was like already full of emotions, I should have got my face together before I went on Zoom. And then when they said it, like I was literally speechless. Like I didn't, I didn't know what to say. And, and the only thing I could say is thank you. And thank you would never be enough of, I, it would never be enough to explain my gratitude of winning a free IVF round, like the possibility of having a child, right? Because we know there's still two outcomes, just the possibility, just the chance to have a little baby Richmond just like blew my mind, right? So when they said it, I was just, I was in tears. And um, I'm glad they kind of edited the video. <laughs> Cause uh, I, but I was telling another friend of mine, um, she called me and I was telling her, I was like, I feel so happy that I won this, but so sad because I've been in a place where I didn't win a grant. And I know how hundreds of women felt that night that they their name wasn't called. So that really, I mean, it broke my heart and it mended my heart at the same time, if that's the thing, you know? Yeah, no, I think what you, I had kind of spoken to about just like having to balance all these different emotions mm -hmm. through the journey. It's like everyone I've talked to has said that even even when there's you know good news, there's you know some heartbreak. Yeah. It, you know what I mean. Wait or wait, heartbreak waiting to come, or just something in the back of your mind that I'm just full. I'm a just emotional mush to be honest. It's like you have to have hope, but you also have to like protect your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when when they said it, uh, and just that night, I I was praying for the people that prayed for the the grant, like uh, heal them, you know, encourage them. Um, but I'm happy for me too, and I don't even I don't even know how to separate it. I don't know what feeling that is to be both happy and sad at the same time. Yeah. Um, so when do you start the that treatment then? Okay, so we did blood work uh, last week. Um, so they're looking at our uh, report to see um, if there's anything that I have to address before going through it. Um, and then I just emailed uh, one of the nurses and they're gonna line us up for a class, hopefully next month, but that class is filling up. That's what she said. So, so hopefully we'll get in the class next month and after we do the class, Hopefully we'll get started with the shots and the procedures by March. Yeah. Um, and the, you know, the Women's Day Warriors are going to be there to kind of... Walk me through it. Pray for me. Yeah. I love them. I, I promise you, I love them. And I don't know where I would be without being connected with them every Wednesday. And can you talk to me, um, you know, you're, you're sitting in front of a crib. Can you talk to me a little bit about the, just the room that you're, that you're sitting in? Oh, girlfriend, this is, this, <laughs> you're trying to make me emotional. It's okay. Uh, you know, we can give you a good edit as well. <laughs> this is like my room of peace. Um, and just because I'm a, I'm a faith girl. Um, anytime I walk in here, um, it just brings me hope just to look at, and sometimes I even imagine having two babies in the crib that's all i can do is just close my eyes and envision two little babies reaching out for me in the crib at first when it was empty uh i would just come in on my hands and knees and just scream out to god you know that's all i can do sometimes my husband doesn't even understand my emotions so i just have to believe that there is a god that can that could take all of my emotions all at once, right? Whatever emotion is there. But now that I have this crib, I have it painted, I have a theme, I have something to look at and look forward to. It just brings me a lot of hope. And the YouTube helps me because I can literally speak about it, talk about it and get it out and put it on a video and not have to think about it too much after that. And sometimes it's just, it's a relief for me. Sometimes I just come in here and just cry sometimes because it's so much, it's so much weight to handle. Just hoping and wishing and praying and co-parenting with other 
students, like co-parenting with them. Like, I, I don't know, it's, this room brings life, really. <laughs> I love it. Ugh. And when Greg put up the crib, oh my God, it, it, it did, it, it just perfect. Your husband put the crib up for you? Yeah, he did it. He, he, there's a YouTube video of him putting it together and at oh, the end, wow. that's our last page. Like it was just put up, um, a couple days ago, probably a week ago or something. Um, you don't necessarily have to like answer my next question, but, um, because I, you know, you probably can't speak for him, but, um, you know, it's very much a journey that it, people take as a family, you know, you're taking this as a couple and, um, what are his emotions kind of like during <laughs> this whole thing? Yeah, I can, um, I can tell you that his emotions uh, don't waver as much as mine. <laughs> he's more he's more uh, emotionally balanced for me, and I think that's what is good about us together. Cause he most he's emotionally balanced, and I am like crazy everywhere. Um, and he he knows that he doesn't have to. He's not going through this. Um, he knows that he's not the one that's taking shots. We've talked about it, but. Um, we've talked about how he's an awesome support um, because sometimes all I need is a hug. Sometimes he, he really can't fix anything. He really can't do anything about it. And sometimes I just need a hug. One time I was telling him I'm losing my footing and he, uh, he bought me a massage event. He, he bought me a massage session and <laughs> I took that day and went to the massage and it was, the best thing. I was losing it. I was about to hit a brick wall. And then he said, hey, go get a massage. And I did. So he he, he does well with supporting me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm um, sorry, this is kind of a skirt too, but what, what grade do you teach? Seventh grade math. <laughs> oh, seventh grade math. Gotcha. They're a little crazy in seventh grade. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, seventh grade math. I don't know why, but I just like flash back to they're um 12 yeah. and 13 they're 12 about to be a teen uh yeah it's a weird it's a weird place <laughs> yeah and you have to like give kind of so much of your energy to all these i mean i think it's kind of powerful that you said co-parent these you know a lot of other kids you know yeah and i i i've watched them grow um and it's crazy uh while you're on a couple students um by me speaking out um, there's some students that has already graduated, already married, and by me speaking out, one of them actually reached to me and said, I'm going through the same thing, and you're still being my teacher. And yeah, that blew, that blew me away. Like, you were, I, I, I forgot what grade she was in when I taught her, but um, I was like, wow, I was your math teacher when you were young, but now I'm inspiring you to keep on going no matter the suffering. Um, but she, she's not one that spoke out, so I wouldn't want to, you know, tell yeah, too much yeah. of her story. Yeah, no, understandable. Um, well, well, I really, really appreciate you, you know, telling me your story. Um, is there anything that you kind of really want people to know about, you know, your journey, or is there anything about this journey that, like, you maybe thought that I would bring up and didn't, you know, just anything else that's kind of on your mind? Mm, I don't think so. I, I think for, um, for me, um, I already talked about how suffering in silence, that, that was very depressing. I went through a lot, um, just by not speaking out. Um, and it also took a toll on the marriage too, because we, we were fighting this, but we didn't know how to fight it together. Uh, so we were kind of in separate corners when we first began, um, cause I didn't know how to speak about it. Of course he didn't know how to help me, but the, when I got to a place where I was comfortable talking about it, um, it also helped the marriage too. So, um, I, I, I can't tell a lot of women, um, to speak about it because that's hard too. Um, because in reality, this can end up two ways, right? My crib can stay empty or my crib can be filled. So, um, 
that's the scary part about speaking out, but I, I think it's more liberating um, to have somebody to talk to. Don't keep it bottled up and don't let go of hope. If I didn't have hope, um, and, I, and honestly, just to put the faith in there, if I didn't have a savior to talk to, I have no clue where my mind would be. Just that belief that he's listening to every prayer. He's bottling up every single tear. He knew when I was going to cry. He knew when I was about to give up. Or just holding on to one scripture that can help me make it one more day. Um, that's where my hope comes from. Um, and if I didn't have that, I think I would be lost. Yeah. Just don't give up hope. Keep believing. Um, sorry, I meant to also ask you this. Um, because, and this is a skirt, sorry, I'm like ping ponging back and forth. Yeah, no, I like it. Is there a, um, because Tennessee doesn't mandate the insurance company cover infertility treatment, can you just talk about the toll that that has on either yourself or people that, you know, you know, now that you're kind of in this network of, of people? Yeah, um, so I... Um, I did try to appeal to um, have my employees cover, um, but they chose not to, and that's understandable because of pandemic and crazy stuff um, that's going on. And I don't want to speak anything negative because I really love my job, and I love yeah. my district, yeah. and I love uh, where I work. Um, but I, for me, it's in the back of my mind, Every day I'm thinking about uh, $20,000 to $30,000. Where is that going to come from? And as a teacher, how is it fair that I can raise everyone else's children but no support to have my own children? So it's emotional every single morning. Um, well, we're remote now, but um, every single morning at 7 o'clock in the morning, um, I'm greeting all these beautiful children, all these miracles, right? Um, giving them the smile that they deserve, giving them everything of me that they deserve or they need because a lot of them don't have, you know, what they need at home. Everything that they need for me to give them every morning. But when I go home, I don't have the support for what I most desire. And that's to have my own baby to look at me, my own baby to say good morning to, my own baby to put Band-Aids on their wounds. Like I'm literally... Just the other day or this year, I had a student lose a tooth and that that gave me so much emotion because it wasn't my child that I was given putting the tooth in the little the little box. And I was like, oh, another baby tooth. Here you go. I put his tooth in the box. And then at home, it's like, I wish I had a baby to box up their tooth, you know. So that's um, that's the stress when I don't have the support of um, having my own child or uh, support to have um, coverage. So then on the weekends or when I'm off from work, when 2.30 hits, I literally try not to take anything home because I'm fundraising, because I'm advocating, because I'm on Facebook like, hey guys, uh, I need you guys to help me. Or I'm on the weekend taking photos of people um, and trying to raise money. Um, and if I didn't have to do that, I think I would um, be more in tune with, you know, lesson plans on the weekend, which is crazy. But I, I still think uh, that I would have more time to plan better for students if I didn't have to fundraise uh, when I got off work or fundraise on the weekend. That, that takes up a lot of time. So that's stressful. And stressful it sounds like too because there's so much. It's like if you just had a known. Something that someone said to me was like if we just had like a known amount. Like someone would tell us like you're going to just have to pay this much. Mm -hmm. That does relieve a lot of stress. But it's yet another. It's like not only the unknown of what your outcome is going to be. But the unknown of like. Yeah. How, how like what strain is this gonna be on? Right on the body, or like when I start taking shots and uh, like my uh, ovaries are working overtime, and I'm emotional in front of all these children. I have no idea how that is gonna look. I'm really scared about that. 
And um, yeah, that strain is a lot too. So. Wow. So it's like when you're, what's the, um, the, it starts with a C? Clomid? The Clomid, yeah. Um, I've heard that that can make people kind of emotional. Yeah, it did. So did you find it like, you know, you have to sort of, you have to be guarded kind of in that way too, where it's like you can't even let people know because you're like, Again, like you say, like raising all these kids, you have to put, it's another wall. Yes, yes. And I think, uh, I talked to my husband about that the other day. I felt like I've uh, mastered the face. I've mastered the face for my kids. Like literally when I walk down the hall, Miss Madison, literally when I'm walking, when the kids were there and I walked down the hall, I had my head tilted down so I can prepare my mind so I can pray on the way down the hall. Like I'm a little further down, so that walk was necessary for me. And I just told a lady the other day, um, you don't know this, but every morning that I saw you smiling at me, I needed that. <sighs> and she didn't even know it. So I'd walk down the hallway, praying that I, I need to be everything I need to be for these students because number one, they don't deserve an emotional teacher. Like I have other things going on. I understand. But God just let me put that aside just until 2.30, just until 2.30. And sometimes when, the, when my students get on the bus, I end up going to my desk and crying because of something that triggered me or because I had to call a parent and the parent really was like, I'm over this child. I'm not doing anything else. You figure it out. Like some parents that just wasn't ready to be parents or over being parents. Um, some of those phone calls are hard. Some of those phone calls are really hard. They're few. They're not, they're not a lot, but uh, they're, yeah. they're well, just a few. Like the pandemic and everything is just so stressful kind of, kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. On, on, you're going through all of mm -hmm. your stuff and then it's like you're also having to work with people who are mm -hmm. but but and, and honestly I told I told my husband I think I'm pretty good with that and then my co-workers are pretty good with not mentioning it uh to me I don't know if they just knew not to or <laughs> they knew that I was going through it uh but they really don't catch me off guard with that conversation um, until like after school. Maybe it's because during school we're like all, all focused on academics, trying to get the kids here and kids there and behaviors. that <laughs> We don't really have time. A lot, my, a lot of my really good friends are teachers and it's so crazy. Just like, they just told me like, we literally go through school not realizing all of the stuff that our teachers do. Like we, like for years, <laughs> It's almost like yeah. we're making 30 decisions in one minute. Right. Because right. of the 30 kids there, right? Right. Ah. Well, that was good. Um, I am, um, again, so thankful for you to, you know, open yeah. up and kind of talk about this. Um, Thank you for allowing me to. No, of course. I'm actually going to the Wednesday Warriors Zoom. Ooh. I don't know if you're going to. Yeah. Zoom, but, um. So I will be there if you are there. Um, but again, I really appreciate, you know, opening up and telling your story. Um, and um, if you need anything, please let me know. I probably am going to be back in touch because I've been asking people for, like, pictures of, you know, you and your husband. And I know that you said that you take photos. I would love to show those as well. Um, but yeah, just any photos that you want to send me, um, just kind of of your life, maybe of the... the Room that you have there. Oh, um, I love how you said peace room. Oh, yeah, anything you want to, anything you want to send me. I um, love it. And I will, you know, be in touch. Thank you so much, Miss Madison. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Yeah, thank you so much. It was so nice to meet you. Bye. Bye.